Welcome to this Weatherford Lifting Operation Safety Training video. In this section of the video, we'll discuss the need to properly inspect cranes, forklifts, trucks, lifting gear, and man riders. There are two basic types of inspections that should be completed over the course of working with lifting equipment. The first type is the third-party inspection, which should be conducted periodically. The second is the daily use inspection. Third-party inspections require that a neutral person conduct the inspection. For our purposes, that means the inspector cannot be a Weatherford employee, but should be the employee of a neutral third party contracted for the purpose of conducting impartial inspection. These inspections should include color coding. The color coding system is a physical identification to prevent the use of equipment that has not been formally inspected. A competent person has to formally inspect all lifting equipment, tools, and machines. Mandatory six months inspections must also take place for their replacement and use. Color coding is done only on lifting equipment, which has a valid third-party certificate. It is the responsibility of the individual user to check the condition of the lifting equipment prior to its use even if it has a valid third-party certification and color code. All lifting equipment, including accessories, cranes, and man riders, such as forklifts and mobile elevated working platforms, should be inspected as per the BMS, or Business Management System. This sets out the standard and procedures for conducting inspections. This excludes cranes, which should instead undergo a third-party inspection every 12 months. Of course, third-party inspections don't eliminate the responsibility of the lifting team to conduct daily use inspections. Each piece of equipment used in a lifting operation should be inspected both before and after the operation to ensure that it is safe and suitable for the job. That means a person with the required knowledge and skills should inspect each piece of equipment for signs of wear, fraying, fatigue, or other signs of potential failure. The inspection should likewise include checking operating controls, engine and fluid levels, checking for visual defects, and inspecting any other components as necessary. Any necessary maintenance should be performed at this time. The results of these inspections and maintenance operations should be recorded in the logbook, which should also list any minor or major repairs completed previously, along with any outstanding repairs required. All service records should be kept up to date in the logbook, including books for third party equipment. It is crucial that the operator of each piece of equipment to be used in the lifting operation have the appropriate practical and theoretical knowledge along with sufficient experience to be considered competent. In this section of the video, we'll cover the usage of trucks, cranes, forklifts, lifting gears, and man riders. Before usage of equipment should begin, it is critical to ensure that the conditions on the ground match those envisioned in the lift plan. Ground conditions around the work site may vary from potholes to uneven hard and soft surfaces for the presence of drainage systems and live electrical wires. Conditions for evaluating ground conditions include rain, in addition to being merely unpleasant, rain can cause a softening of the ground, thereby creating a potentially unsafe work environment. To address the problems posed by soft ground, ensure outriggers have matting in place under each fully extended outrigger. The matting should be strong enough to prevent sinking and provide added stability and support for the crane. Also, ensure that outriggers are evenly extended. This will prevent sinking and give added stability and support for the crane.
In hot and cold climates, rain and in some countries even snow can cause a number of operational problems. Such problems may include the inability to hear, see, and vocally give appropriate signals and instructions to the crane operator. Hot climates can also contribute to personal fatigue, disorientation, and dehydration. These conditions can lead to giving or receiving incorrect signals, creating bad judgment, resulting in poor decisions regarding working radius and height limitations. Those poor decisions can lead to accidents. As such, it is critical to account for these factors in the lift plan and for each member of the lift team to be aware of their own physical condition. Wind conditions have the potential to cause a load to swing uncontrollably, resulting in lateral and longitudinal instability. Such instability can be strong enough to generate enough force to pull the crane over. It is therefore critical to understand what the wind conditions will be during a lift operation. To mitigate the risk posed by high winds, check weather forecasts in advance of lifting operations, use wind socks on site, and keep the loads low. Also, use at least two taglines at all times. Lift teams should consider how other operations at the site may affect the lift, what personnel or vehicles may be moving through the site, and whether or not visitors may be present. Ensure that all equipment used in the lifting operation keeps to the speed limits required by the site and ground conditions. Everyone on the site should understand that a lifting operation is to take place through the use of clear communication and sufficient signage. In this section of the video, we'll cover the safety precautions you should employ when securing loads before lifting operations. The difference between a properly secured load and an improperly secured load can be the difference between life and death. As such, it's critical that the lift team secures and unsecures loads under properly controlled conditions with all potential hazards identified and controlled for. However, before we get into the details, it's important to visit three commitments each team member must take to heart before any lift operation commences. I will always intervene and stop unsafe acts. I will always use approved safe work practices. I will always use the correct PPE for the tasks. Before loading, Consider how you want the load to arrive at its next destination and load accordingly. No matter how short the journey may be, ensure that the loads are adequately secured. Also, check the safe working load and any reductions on the gear before attaching gear to a load. The down points must be firmly attached to the chassis, the metal cross member, or an outrigger of the vehicle. Where practical, use doubling plates. Prior to moving off with the loaded vehicle, all transitioning devices should be checked by the driver. After a short distance, the lashings should be again checked. Therefore, the driver should check the lashings at regular intervals during the journey. When unloading, consider this. Before loads are removed and load tensioners are released, the lift team should check to ensure the load has not moved in transit or has the possibility to displace them when tensioners have been relaxed. Remember, the load can still splay apart after the tension is released. We'll talk about safe loading and offloading of trucks in the next video.